Now that we have the hang of this, we can calculate the rest of these quickly. So in the next column, we're going to start here. So we're going to calculate the protection level for class 3 against 2 and then 3 against 1. So let's copy the data over to our spreadsheet. So we have the fare for class 3, $290 on the left-hand side, and then the fare for class 2, $420, and the mean and standard deviation of demand for class 2. We use the same procedure. Now the EMSR we're looking for is $290. So we scroll down and look for $290 and right right about there so 36.75 we're going to protect 36.75 seats so we're going to protect 30 oops 36.75 seats for class two so they don't get sold to class three and now we're going to do three against one okay so we have uh, fair one at five hundred dollars. The left-hand side doesn't change. The mu and sigma. We look for the EMSR again for two hundred ninety, and went past it. Let's see, two somewhere in between there. We'll go with the we'll go with the lower theta, fifteen point two five. So back to our black. So fifteen point two five seats for class one against class three. And then finally, we have one protection to uh, calculate here, and that's why I didn't even put J. It's fair class two against one. So we'll copy that over. So copy that over, and now we simply find the expected value or the MSR of 420 again, and it's 11. So we're going to protect 11 seats for class one against two. So our last protection level is 11 seats for fair class one against two. Then we can bring these totals down. This is 52 and this is just 11. So now we have our EMSR protection levels for these three uh, sets of classes. So as the $125 customers arrive, they won't have access to 109 seats that have pr been protected for uh, the, the uh, fares above 125. Then as the $290 customers arrive, they won't have access to these 52 seats and the $420 customers will have access to any seats except for these 11. So an easier way to see that is how many seats would be available to each of these customers. So let's uh, calculate the booking limits. I showed you how to calculate booking limits in an earlier video, so we'll do this quickly. Let's assume the airplane holds 150 seats. So how many seats would we be would we allow to be sold in each fare class? What is the booking limit? Well, uh, the highest fare class always get ac gets access to all the seats, so we'd be happy to sell all 150 at $500, even though we only protected 11. For the second fare class, for the $420 customers, they can book 150 minus the 11 that were protected for the higher fare, so 139. The fair class three customers paying two hundred ninety dollars will be limited to one fifty minus the fifty two seats that were protected for the classes above it. So that would be ninety eight, ninety eight, and then the fourth fair class would be limited to one fifty minus one oh nine. So that one hundred nine seats are protected for higher fares. So that would be what 40, 41. And those are the numbers that would be input to, into the reservation system for the seats to be sold. So there you are. These are the EMSR A protection levels for the JFK Miami market given these fares and these demand forecasts. Now let me point out a couple of things here. The first is that the protection levels are not equal to the demand forecast. So let's take this example here where we protected 11 seats 
for fair class one so they weren't sold at $420. The protection level is not equal to the demand forecast and that is something that uh, can be confusing for revenue management analysts. They see a forecast for a particular fare and they want to protect enough seats to satisfy that forecast. Well, there are two things going on here that result in a protection level that's different from the demand forecast. First of all, this is just an average. This is the mean. So on average, we expect 16.5 customers to request the $500 fare. But there's some variability around that mean, and that's the standard deviation. So when we calculate the probability of these customers arriving, the standard deviation is going to adjust that probability for the variability in the forecast. The other thing that EMSR considers when calculating protection levels is the fare that the seats are being protected for and the fare that the seats are being protected against. The greater the distance between these two fares, the higher the protection level because there's more to be gained by protecting seats for the higher fare even though there's some uncertainty around the forecast. For example, let's say these fares were very close together. Let's say the second, uh, the fare class two fare was $490, only $10 difference. Then in that case, the uh, EMSR would not protect even 11 seats because the, the risk of protecting too many seats for only a $10 gain is too great. So if we protect too many seats and the $500 fare customers don't arrive, we might go out with empty seats when we could have sold it at $490. Now when the difference is great, it makes more sense to take that risk. And EMSR is considering that. And the way you would see that is in the fare ratio. So if you took the fare, uh, the lower fare, divided by the higher fare, the uh, lower the ratio, the greater the protection level would be. So if you see a protection level that doesn't quite make sense, keep in mind that that protection level is reflecting the variability in the forecast and just what we have to gain by protecting uh, one fare against another fare. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that there are no protection levels for fare class 4. And that makes sense, right? There are no fares below $125, so there's, there's nothing to protect against. So there's no need to set a protection level. We just sell all seats that wouldn't be sold at a higher fare are available to be sold at the lowest fare in the market. And notice I didn't even include a demand forecast here. The demand forecast for the lowest fare class is never used in EMSR. Now, if you're using a revenue management system, you will almost always see a demand forecast for all of your classes because at the time of the forecast, the system doesn't know that there's not a lower fare. So if you're a revenue management analyst or you're working on forecasting systems, don't spend a lot of time trying to improve the accuracy of the forecast for the lowest fare class because it has no impact at all on the protection levels or the expected revenue that will come from managing this flight. I mentioned earlier that there are two versions of EMSR, A and B. And the reason there are two versions is because, well, originally there was no A, it was just EMSR, and an issue was discovered with EMSR, and then EMSR B was developed to address that issue, and they just called this one A to you know, differentiate between the two algorithms. In the next video, I'll go through what that issue is, and then what EMSR B is, just to give you a little bit of a preview, the issue has to do with how these protection levels are added together and how that sometimes can result in a very um, conservative solution that protects too many seats for higher fare classes. EMSR B tends to result in lower protection levels, which may or may not be a better solution. So don't 
immediately conclude that EMSR B is better than EMSR A just because it came later, many airlines still implement EMSR A even though they certainly have the option of um, choosing EMSR B. And that may be a better answer for some airlines than uh, going with the other algorithm. We'll go through those differences in the next video, and I'll try to give you some of the intuition behind choosing one of these algorithms over the other. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.